back after this short timeout, we'll talk about the, the opponents tonight, the Tampa Spartans. 
You are listening to the pregame show on AM670 KPUA Hilo. We'll be right back after these messages. Hawaii Vision Specialty. Saturday night and lost big at Montana State Billings last night. Either night couldn't find the range at all. Of course, you a three point range in the game and inside as well. So, try to end up on a positive note. Their last game of the 2017 calendar year is coming up in just a few minutes. Let's take one more 60 second timeout. When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineup. You're listening to the pregame show on AM670, KPUA TV. Back after this. Hurry into Subway and get a great menu when you want it from morning to night. I'm Russ Blunt. Glad you could join us tonight for this 8 o'clock tip-off between the University of Tampa and Hawaii Hilo. Focus tonight will be in their red uniforms with black trim and mostly red, gray, and black 
Under Armour shoes. University of Tampa at home in their white uniforms with red trim and black shoes. Let's take a look at that starting lineup for Tampa, and it's a little bit confusing. We're starting five guys who haven't started at all this year. That one guard will be a 6'3 sophomore from Grand Canary, number one, Alber Alberto Moreno. At the other guard will be a 6'2 sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 13, Makai Biffle. At a forward, be number 21, a junior from Tampa, 6'5, Anthony Gamble. And at a swing spot, it'll be number 24, Franz Pinard. He's 6'4", senior from Arlington, Massachusetts. Rounding out the starting lineup tonight for Tampa, will be a 7'1", junior center from Serbia, Nikola Marijan. So those are your starters, Moreno, Biffle, Gamble, Pinard, and Marijan. And again, soon, I would think, come off the bench, because they are suited up tonight to be Duke Sheldon, who averages 13 points and 13 rebounds a contest, and also Pat Bacon. Averages 22 and a half points a game, six rebounds and four assists. So we'll be on the lookout for them. They can stay on the bench though for a while, as far as I'm concerned. And the Vulcans hopefully can take advantage of. This is how they'll start tonight. UH Hilo will start at one guard. Number two, Eric Watry, a 6'3 sophomore from Fort Orchard, Washington, averaging six points per game. At a forward, number four, Devin Johnson, 6'7 junior from Battleground, Washington, almost 11 points a game for Devin, five and a half rebounds a contest. Number 10 is Denham Brook. He'll be at the center spot. 6'8", junior from Auckland, New Zealand. He transferred from BYU, Hawaii. 10.5 points a game for Brook. Six rebounds a contest for him. And he is second in the Pac West in block shots. Number 15 is Trey Ingram. 6'1", senior from Scottsdale, Arizona. And a transfer from St. Martin's University. 15.7 points per game. And a 40% shooter from three-point range. And rounding out the starting lineup will be number 20, Random Baranobis. 6'3", senior from Hilo. 7.6 points a game, 6 rebounds a contest. He is the team leader for the Vulcans in pulling down rebounds. So those are your starters for the Vulcans. Watry, Johnson, Brooke, Ingram, and Baranobis. Head coach, of course, is G.E. Coleman. Head coach for Tampa, Richard Schmidt. And we are ready to go. Vulcans will be heading from left to right across your radio dial. And they get the tip. So Ingram will bring it up. Tampa looks to be in man-to-man -man defense. They are. Ingram to Baranovas. Johnson between the circles out here. Here's Ingram again, looking for some space. Back to Denham Brook. He's out here close to the center court spot. Here's Baranovas. Drives, dishes out to Johnson. Johnson looking for a lane. Skips it back outside to Watry. Three-pointer. Rattles in and stays. Eric Watry with the three-pointer. And the Vulcans on the board first. Alberto Moreno, the point guard, brings it up. Goes coast to coast. And ball no good. Denham Brook tips it to Trey Ingram. Ingram will push it up the other way. 3-0 Vulcans. Out top, Watry. Picked up quickly this time. Backs out, calls a play. Gets a pick from Denham Brook. Back to Ingram. Still way, way out here in three-point land. He'll lob it just off the block to Devin Johnson. Johnson will drive in, loses his footing, and we've got a whistle. And I believe our first foul of the night. Vulcans will take it out, out of bounds. And the inbound comes to Watry. Watry right side of the court, dribbles left, now skips it inside to Denham Brook, and it's knocked out of bounds. Vulcans will keep it. One minute in, Watry with the three-pointers, our only points on the board here so far. Baradobas will inbound and go all the way out top to Ingram. Ingram backs up, gets a pick from Brook. Man defense, they switch on him. Now Baranobis will drive in, has it slot, uh, picked, slapped away. Devin Johnson picks it up and lays it in. 5-0 Vulcans. Heads up play by Devin Johnson. A transfer from Lower Columbia College. Here we go, top of the key, back the other way. Three-pointer on the way off the mark. That was Mackay Biffle. Rebound to the Vulcans. Ingram pushes it up. Watry right side, lob indoors to Johnson. Johnson backing in against the seven foot one post. Outside to Ingram, three pointer on the way, top of the key, got it. Trey Ingram with a three pointer, and Vulcans now with an 8 0 lead. Less than two minutes in. Three pointer back the other way, that's Anthony Gamble. In and out, no good. Random Baranovas will get the rebound. Outlet to Ingram. Ingram will push it up left side. Finds a seam, drives, now fadeaway jumper from the corner, no good. Rebound to Gamble. 
Kappa back the other way. Here's Biffle. He'll drive. Shot partially blocked. Also got some body. And that foul will be on Eric Watry. So Makai Biffle will head to the free throw line. 6'2 sophomore guard from Indianapolis. One of two players on this Tampa roster from Indy. The other one is Pat Bacon, their leading scorer on the year. Not in the game yet. First free throw from Biffle, no good, off the front of the rim. Biffle just a 54% free throw shooter on the year. Second shot coming. It's good. So Tampa on the board at 8-1 to one at the 17-44 mark of the first half. Now first substitution into the ball game for Tampa, and it's number 11, Marcel Robinson, normally a starter for them. 6'5", senior, 14 points a game for Robinson. He's out of Palm Bay, Florida. Here's Ingram with a long three. It comes up short. Tampa with the rebound. Moreno drives in, tries to hand it off to Nicola Marijan, but it was knocked out of bounds by the Vulcans. Tampa will inbound. Moreno underneath his own basket, number one on his jersey. We'll get it to the seven foot one Marijan. Now to Marcel Robinson. He'll bring it out top and call a play. Hands off to Moreno. Right in front of us, we're courtside at the Hawaiian Convention Center. Moreno to gamble. Robinson will pull up, three-pointer long. Devin Johnson pulls it down to Ingram. Tampa gets back quickly on defense. Watry left side. Waiting for some movement. Now he gets some. Baranovas comes out to get the ball, and Ingram, they'll reset. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Ingram will take it right side, still here on the perimeter. Watry comes off a pick, top of the key, three-pointer, in and out, no good. Rebound to Anthony Gamble. Up ahead, Biffle. Back out top, Gamble. Now the seven-footer. Marishon will pass it inside to Robinson. Fadeaway jumper, got it. About an eight-footer from Marcel Robinson. His first points of the night, and it's eight to three. Vulcan's in the lead. Lob pass inside to intended for Johnson. Stolen by Marijan. Here comes Tampa. Robinson right side in the paint. And they're going to call him for a charge. Guess who took the charge? You got it. Randon Baranovas. Wish we had stats on that because in his four-year career, he's taken a lot of them. He's a warrior, and I know he is banged up a little bit, but he's out playing Tampa sets up in kind of a loose man-to-man -man full court pressure. But the Vulcans get it up across the 10 second line easily. Ingram looking for a pick. We'll pass it left side to Bear Nobis. He'll lob it inside now to Denim Brook, who's immediately doubled up. A little fadeaway shot, no good by Brook. Rebound comes down to Alberto Moreno, the point guard. He'll go back the other way. And leaning in is Gamble. He missed the shot, but drew the foul. And he'll head to the line for two. Foul will be on Denimbrook. And we'll have free throws coming, but first our initial media time out of the first half. 15.44 to go in the opening period. Your score, UH Hilo 8, Tampa 3. Back after this. Aloha.
During the earthquake, it was a terrible time for me because I was not in Kathmandu, I was not with my family. Because of my work, I was traveling to one of the most remote parts of Nepal. Next day, I got back to Kathmandu. I was almost killed in a landslide, but you know, after I got back, after four or five days, we thought like, okay, at least we are safe. We thought like we have to do something, you know, this is the time. We formed a loose network. We have different individuals who wanted to help without getting affiliated to any organization because they wanted to do it from their heart. So we thought of reconstructing a school in Kavri. Many students, they are educated there and if this school is destroyed, they have nowhere to go, you know. Their education will be jeopardized. They might have to walk three, four hours every day to go to school. So we're making room for the bus. That's the only bus that travels from the village to the city. The bus goes to Kathmandu only once a day. And you can see people all over, um, even the roof of the bus. I really would like to thank SPU and the School of Social Work and especially the professors and the students who made this effort to do fundraising to help rebuild the school. I really hope that with this small effort, it will have really, really good impact on these students. They will be highly motivated, they will be highly encouraged to study well and they are going to be very good citizens for our country. What we learn at SPU is you know, social work, is not only for giving, it's not only for serving people, it's for empowering them so that they can stand on their own and they can be self-dependent. So the school we have rebuilt will help the students to become empowered. We could replicate all those skills and tools that we learned in HPU directly in Nepal, working at the micro as well as macro level to make a positive impact in the people's lives HPU really taught me how to dream big.
Knowledge is more easily grasped when you receive a 